Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. I've spent a bit of time now talking about weight loss and my last couple of videos have been focused around this topic and last week I talked about how exactly exercise can help you lose fat. And when it comes to weight loss, exercise is one of the two major things you can do to get good results. Click here to watch that one if you missed it. And now the other very important side of the coin is of course diet. You can reverse all the progress that you make with exercise by just neglecting your diet. So when it comes to diet, Yes, reducing fat intake and high fat foods like fast food in particular is something that will benefit weight loss. But I think one of the most useful things is actually understanding what all the different types of fats that are found in food actually mean. Because when you pick up any kind of food product in the supermarket, you look at the nutrition label to see the breakdown of everything, and then there's just a few types of fats listed there. Some fat is good for you, you need it in your diet, others are bad and you shouldn't have them. And there is a lot of information out there as well on social media and everyone seems to have an opinion about everyone should be eating and conveniently all these opinions are different. So today I thought let's just make things simple and clear and go through them all so that you walk away from this feeling a bit confident about what you're looking at when you look at these nutrition labels so you can make the best decisions about your diet for yourself. Now to start with, dietary fats are one of the three macronutrients found in food. Remember when I talked about carbohydrates, I mentioned the three macronutrients are carbs, protein, and fat. Now these macronutrients are essential, meaning that your body needs them to survive. So if you want to be healthy, you shouldn't be looking to cut fat out completely from your diet because you do need it. The main thing fat is used for in the body is actually energy. Fat has a lot of energy packed into it and compared to protein and carbohydrates, fats have more energy per gram. And in my last video, I already mentioned that when your body is in need of energy, it will look to storage forms of fat to break down and use for fuel. Now, another thing that fats are needed for is the absorption of your fat soluble vitamins. I haven't gone into these vitamins much except for vitamin D, but essentially vitamins are either water or fat soluble and your fat soluble vitamins will hitch a ride with fat to be absorbed into your body. If there isn't any fat around, then they will just pass on through and you don't get any of their effects, which is quite bad. Now, fats are also needed to make cells in general. The walls surrounding your cells, their membranes, are made up of a type of fat and without this, all your cells would just collapse, so you would collapse. They're also needed in order to make hormones too. But probably most important is the fact that your brain is made up of about 60% fat. Fats are crucial for brain development and function. Now, it's certain types of fats that your brain needs, but we will cover that in a bit. But the point is, fats are necessary and essential to having a healthy body, so you shouldn't cut them out, but rather make better decisions about the types of fat that you're eating. So, there are three types of dietary fat that is found in food, and they are saturated fats, unsaturated fats, and trans fats. So let's start with saturated fat. When it comes to the structure of fats, they tend to be a long chain. This is a picture of what they can look like. Now I have to go into a bit of chemistry here, but bear with me. Saturated fats are firm and rigid. This long chain is very straight and solid. And because of this, they tend to be either semi-solid or solid at room temperature. So things like butter or the fat that you can see on a piece of meat. Now you would usually find saturated fats in animal-based products, but they are also in some plant oils too. Some examples of foods that are sources of saturated fats are meats, dairy products, processed meats, which are sausages, bacons, and hot dogs. They have a lot of saturated fat. Palm and coconut oil, and also baked goods like cookies, pastries, and cakes, and that's usually because of the butter that's used to make them. Now, saturated fats are actually the type of fat that isn't too good for your health. It can increase cholesterol levels. It increases LDL, which is what people call bad cholesterol. Saturated fat also can build up in your arteries and lead to reduced blood flow. These things all increase heart disease. So when it comes to heart health, saturated fats are something to try to reduce where you can. Now, when people go on about fats being bad for you, they are probably talking about saturated fats. But let's move on to unsaturated fats. These are pretty much the good guys when it comes to fat. Remember with saturated fat, I said they were rigid and solid. Well, 
Unsaturated fats are different because they are bendy and flexible and this means they are less tightly packed and are usually in liquid form at room temperatures, whereas your saturated fats were mainly solid. Now the reason they are bendy is because they have what is called a double bond in their chemical structure. Now there are actually two types of unsaturated fats, your monounsaturated and your polyunsaturated fats. Monounsaturated fats have only one double bond and they are found in foods like olive oil, avocados and some nuts like almonds and cashews. Polyunsaturated fats, now they have multiple double bonds and this means they are extra bendy and extra flexible. They are found in fatty fish, so salmon and trout, in flax seeds, walnuts and some vegetable oils like soybean and sunflower oils. Polyunsaturated fats include some big names when it comes to fats. If you've ever heard of omega-3 and omega-6 fats, they are a type of polyunsaturated fat and they are very important to your health. Unsaturated fats are usually very beneficial for your health. They can help lower cholesterol, they reduce LDL, which is the opposite of what saturated fats do. So they are good for your heart. They can also reduce inflammation in your body and are important for brain development and that usually comes from the omega-3 and omega-6. Now the last one is trans fats. These are actually artificially created fats. They actually start out being unsaturated, so they are nice and flexible, but then they get artificially straightened out and this turns them from a liquid oil to something that is more solid or semi-solid, something actually more similar to saturated fats. Now trans fats actually started out being a healthy alternative to saturated fat that were found in animal products. They were also less expensive than using butter, but over time, researchers found out that they're actually quite bad for your health and cause issues very similar to saturated fats, which isn't really that surprising because they just took unsaturated fats, turned it into something very similar to saturated fats and expected something different. But anyway, trans fats increase risk for heart disease because they not only increase LDL cholesterol, but they reduce HDL cholesterol, which is what people call the good cholesterol. So this can really increase risk of heart problems later in life. Trans fats also lead to weight gain, obesity, and cause inflammation around the body, which leads to chronic health conditions, again, heart disease, but also diabetes. So in a way, they ended up being worse than saturated fat. Now, trans fats are usually found in processed foods like fried and baked goods. Fast food has a very large amount of trans fats. So if you are wanting to reduce the amount of trans fats you're consuming, then try to reduce fast food if that is something you are having regularly. Hopefully now you are feeling like you understand the different types of fats a bit better. When you look at a nutrition label now and they split up all the different types of fats, you can look at them and then make a decision about whether it's going to be a beneficial product for your health or not. But one more thing you need to know is how much of these types of fats should be in your diet. And based on guidelines by the World Health Organization, the American Heart Association and Australian Dietary Guidelines, Saturated fats should be limited. You want less than 10% of your daily calorie intake to come from saturated fats. And some people even suggest going down to 5% for better heart health. Now trans fats should be avoided as much as possible. Guidelines suggest ideally 0%. But look, that's probably not realistic in real life, but try to make small changes where you can start removing it from your diet. Limit processed foods, limit fried foods, and when shopping for food, if the label says partially hydrogenated oils, then that means there are trans fats. And look at the nutrition label to see how much of the fat is trans fats. Anything more than two grams of trans fat per serve is considered high, so then you can try and look for alternatives. And of course, monounsaturated and polyunsaturated fats should be included in your diet and you should try to replace saturated and trans fats with these types of fat instead to improve your heart health. This means having more fatty fish, more seeds, nuts and olive oil. You're not going to have a perfect diet overnight and I don't think there is such thing as a perfect diet anyway. Everyone's going to be different. But make some small changes, become informed, and make decisions that are best for you in your own situation, and that's all you can really do. Now, all the guidelines I looked at, the recommendations for the average healthy adult. If you are someone with health conditions already, then work with a professional to get the right dietary recommendations for yourself. So hopefully this video has helped make things clearer. Give a like and subscribe if you learned something and comment any questions you have. I know I didn't go into omega-3 and 6 fats much in this, but they will be in another video coming very soon, so don't worry. I'll see you next week, and until then, keep playing the long game.
Mm-hmm.